Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is episode five of the custom ice cream truck build. In the last episode, you saw me finish up the paint and body on our Snubnose 58 Ford conversion. In this episode, we're going to rewind just a little bit to show you what I was working on at the same time on the other end of the frame. Today, we are going to be focusing on the back section here, building the custom box, which is what will actually turn this thing into an ice cream truck. Now, I've already started the process here. Let me catch up to speed. So I started off by heading to the local steel supplier to pick up a bunch of steel. Once I picked that up, I cut out some two inch square tubing, 11 gauge for our base. I'm going to have to make this base in two separate sections and then build some integrated structural fenders right here. Once I build the entire base, I'm then going to lay down some 14 gauge diamond plate. I've got that laying over there. That will make the interior base for it. Once that's all completed, then we can start the process for building the rest of the box. So let's get to it. All right, we've got both of our base pieces clamped together. Everything is looking perfectly straight. See if I send the camera down here. We've got a perfect line all the way to the end. The next step is going to be making these fenders. I've already got it marked out exactly where I want it. I used an angle finder. We are at 28 degrees is the angle that I want for the top here. So I have four pieces cut out. We have a 35 and a quarter inch span. So I have these cut to 39 inches so that I can then do a 14 degree cut right here. We'll then take these end pieces, flip them around. 14 and 14 will give us a 28 degree bend. And then we can clamp them all together, weld them at the same time so they are identical, and then get them installed.
All right, we've got all the equipment in the box and then I have it raised to the 27 inches that it will be on the truck. We've got two freezers on the end here. We've got our little ice cream station. Now this isn't the one that we're going with long term. This is just temporary. I'll show you why in a little bit. We've got a refrigerator and then we have our sink. Now the area between our sink and our freezer, we are going to be doing a custom countertop over here. Same thing, another custom countertop. I am going to be putting our power generator down here. Well, they call it a power generator, but it's really just a battery with an inverter. And we're going with that setup instead of a gasoline powered one, just for the noise and the smell. Let me show you what it looks like from out here. So the reason we have to change out this ice cream freezer is because unless you are super tall, you are not actually going to be able to see inside to the ice cream. So there is a different model that has a large viewing window right here. I will build another window on the outside of the box so that you can easily see the ice cream from the inside. And then I will be removing the wheels off of both of these coolers and then the ice cream freezer as well so that we can drop everything down just a couple of inches to make the service window as low as possible. All right, we've got all of the equipment off the platform. The next step is to make sure that this is perfectly level before we build the walls. In order to do that, I have removed it from the lift. We have it sitting on four jack stands right now, and then I have my laser level shooting a little green laser 360 degrees, so I can then measure the difference from that laser to the platform. Turns out we are about 3 16 of an inch low on this side, so I will go ahead and put a couple of shims on the top of these jacks to raise this up. Once this is perfectly straight, we can then start building our walls. Go ahead, go ahead and squeeze the trigger. Here we go. Look at how cool that looks. That is a clean well. All right, guys, we finally got the last piece of our box puzzle in. This is the freezer that we are going to be going with. It's about the same size as the freezer we had for our mock-up. The biggest difference, this large viewing window right here. Now, right off the bat, I'm sure you can tell we have got to drop it a good distance in order for that viewing window to be underneath our square tubing. We have four and an eighth inches it has to be dropped. We've got about two inches on the wheels, so that is the easy portion that we can simply unbolt and drop it down. It gets a lot more complicated than that, though, because because the other freezer comes out 36 inches to right here, meaning this one needs to move over seven and a half inches. Now that entire section is going to be taken up right here where we've got our fender. Now the whole situation is complicated further because all of the electronics and the compressor are located on this side. And it's really frustrating because there's absolutely nothing over here. So if the compressor just so happened to be located over here, we could simply cut out a little angle right here, scoot it up against the fender, and we'd be in great shape. What I'm going to do is remove this front cover here and figure out a way to move all of the electronics and the compressor over as far as possible and then up as far as possible so that I can then modify the framing for the bottom so that it has a little angle there and I can scoot it right up against the fender.
All right, guys, so the compressor mount is completed. It is currently running. Our temperature is dropping from 16 degrees down to zero degrees. I wanted to show you guys a tool that I was using during this whole process because my biggest concern when I was making that mount was that I would accidentally drill into the cooling coils on the inside, which is the same issue except backwards for what I had with this two post lift. When I was installing this, I had heated lines running in the ground and you can see I've got some red marks exactly where those lines ran. I had to use my buddy's thermal imaging camera in order to find those. So I decided now was the time to get my own. I've got this one from Top Don. I have to say, I am just totally blown away at the resolution on this thing. Look at that. It is just crazy how clear everything is. Now, I remember back in the day, these things were like $2,500 for a camera like this. This was 300 bucks and you can tell exactly where the cooling lines are just super happy you know i love new tools i was even looking at the back wall of my shop here because i knew that i didn't insulate it fully and i was like oh i wonder if i can tell exactly where the insulation stops yep stops right there so i'll go ahead and put a link to this thing in the description ah i just love new tools all right the next step is going to be installing four legs they do have to be unequal length because two of them are going to be sitting on that fender so let me get some measurements done and get those legs built All right, well the ice cream freezer looks good from the outside, but I did make a mistake here. Unfortunately, when I was building this bracket, I did not get the measurement right for how far out the fender came. So I will have to remove this entire bracket, move it over a couple of inches. In order to do that, I will just remove these two bolts and then I will have to put in two more riv nuts in our frame here. Not the end of the world, but a little bit annoying. this thing works this thing goes, does two things it puts a hole in the steel right there or it puts a little bend in it now watch this when I squeeze it it's gonna be a little bit loud but don't get scared yeah it's not bad this is what we do we're gonna come over here we slide it in all the way and then go ahead and squeeze the trigger now again Look at that, you put all those little holes in there. Do you see them on the ground? Look at those little guys. Cute. Yeah, you wanna keep going? Yeah. All right. You wanna do it all by yourself? Yeah. All right. All right hold on a second. Look at that, you did a fantastic job.
Guys, today's video is brought to you by Olight Flashlights, kind of. They're not really a sponsor of this video, but they are a supporter of this channel. For the last four years, they've been sending me flashlights for reviews and testing, and every time they do, they send me a 10% off promo code to pass on to you guys, and I often forget to do that. That promo code is AC10. I will put a link in the description below for their website. They are a very high-quality flashlight. In those four years, I've had exactly zero failures, even when I froze one solid in a block of ice. So if you're in the market for a flashlight, check them out. Now back to the video. All right, guys, our last wall is completed, which means it is now time for our roof. Now, this is a little bit different than the sides. The sides are welded into place. We're doing an epoxy on the outside and a sealant on the inside to keep everything watertight. For the roof, we're not doing any welding. We are doing 3 16 closed fasteners along with 3M panel bond adhesive. I've already got that last sheet installed because these two overlap that last sheet, kind of like how the shingles on your roof will overlap each other so that the rain flows straight down. I've got some Clico fasteners right here holding these two sheets in place. That allows me to mark out with a chalk line where all of the spars are going across it so that once I lift this side up do the panel bond adhesive all the way around I can let it back down use the Clicos to hold it exactly where it was the markings will already be there where all the spars are to tell me exactly where I can drill those holes for the rivets once this one is riveted into place I can then rivet that one into place 24 hours later everything will be cured and we will be good to go All right, now that the roof is complete, the next step is going to be building our back door. So let's go fabricate one. All right, now that we've got this back door finished, we are ready for our next step, which is going to be painting the entire box. That will be done in three stages. We've got prep, primer, and paint. For the prep, I've already wiped everything down with a simple green degreaser, but I will go back over it with a very light muriatic acid solution that will not only get rid of the last bits of oil, but it will also give the metal a very slight etching to make it better for the primer to adhere to. After that, we'll shoot it with the primer. After that, we'll shoot it with the paint. Before I can do any of that, however, I do want to figure out how much this weighs. So let's get the scale underneath it and see what we're dealing with. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's totally on the scale. All right, let's take a look. We are at 
1,558 pounds. That is fantastic news. The tear weight on a 20 foot shipping container, now remember this is 14 feet, but a 20 foot shipping container is around 5,500 pounds. So we are much lighter than that. Man, that is great news. All right, let's get, uh, let's get this thing painted. All right guys, so painting this box has been one of the most frustrating paint jobs I've ever taken on. I decided to use my Greco paint sprayer for it. It's the same one that I use for doing bathrooms, bedrooms, inside, outside of houses. I used it to do the sealant on the upstairs of our barn dominium. I even used it when I did the pizza truck because it lays down a nice, thick, uniform coat. It's also an airless paint sprayer, so it has basically a built-in compressor and you can just toss the little suction hose into a bucket of paint and then just keep painting until you run out. So it's very good for large projects. The problem is because it is a thick uniform coat, when you have a bunch of edges like I've got, I have to spray the steel at different angles and I'm getting overspray absolutely everywhere. So last night what I did was I coated the whole thing just on the edges so that then the paint would dry overnight and I can then coat the middle section. But even doing just that, I got a bunch of drips. Let me show you what I mean. So on the back here, let me show you this. Our inside that nobody is ever going to see came out absolutely perfect. No drips, perfect coverage, totally uniform. Right here, where everybody will see it, I've got drips all over the place, like right here. And the reason for that is because I have to spray at one angle up here in order to get coverage on both sides of this steel, but then I also have to spray down here to get coverage on the underside. And when I do that, the overspray hits right here and then drips down. It's really bad at the top here, where I've got a bunch of different angles that I have to spray from. Now what I should have done is used my automotive paint gun and painted the whole thing with an automotive paint because if I had any issues with dripping, it would be dry in 15 minutes. I could sand it down and then recoat, but I would be less likely to drip because on those tiny little areas like right there or when I'm spraying on the insides, I could turn the pressure a little bit down, get a little bit less flow of the material on it. It would have been a lot quicker to do it that way, but... This is where we're at. This is a good paint. It is getting great coverage. It's just taking a lot of extra time to get rid of all these drips. So now I've got to sand down these little drips. We'll give it one last coat and then we should be done.
All right, the next step is going to be spraying the interior with a bed liner. It will be the same process as the pizza truck, if you guys saw that, same product and everything. I'm using the Raptor protective coating. Got this on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. I've had wonderful luck with that in the past. Very simple process, just hook it up to my air gun and shoot it. So let's get it all sprayed out. All right guys, well the box is all done. I think it came out fantastic. Looks really good on that truck. We have a ways to go before the project is done. We of course have a roll up door that will be right here. We have the entire interior to finish, including the ceiling, the lights, the entire electrical system, our back wall. We've got to fill this thing up with equipment, but I'll worry about that in the next episode. Right now, let's just take another look at this. Fan freaking tastic. I'll give you guys a quick walk around. There's that front bumper that everybody and their brother absolutely hates. I'll probably explain later why I had to go with a bumper that style. Here it looks like from the other side. Kind of cool, it looks like those old timey box trucks. All right guys, so that's it for this episode. Thanks for making it this far. The next episode should be out in two weeks and hopefully we'll be finishing up that interior. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.